we're back at the sleeping grush in front of a cozy fireside. Mugs on the table. Drinks in her hand, mostly in her gullet. <laughs> I'm Loremaster Matt. And I'm Fail on John. And we are happy that you're joining us today for the Sleeping Grush podcast. We are brought to you today by Cardboard Corner Cafe, where we are sitting right now enjoying our lovely drinks. If you're in Kansas City and you need some place to go, play some games, get some good grub, get some great drinks, Cardboard Corner Cafe is the place for you. This game's going on right here in this room. There is. We are not in our normal rooms today. We are in the main game room. There are games going on around us. We've just completed a round of games ourselves. And here we are. So we got a lot to talk about today. We do. Phelan John. <laughs> um, one of the things we want to talk about, we're going to do something a little new today. Um, John, tell us about a game, Free Blades, that you've played recently. How okay. it went. I can do that. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> because you can't see us, he is staring directly at his opponent that he's about to talk about. <laughs> I recently played a game of Free Blades with uh, the lovely and talented Jacob Messinger. Especially lovely. Especially lovely. Who just happens to be here in our <laughs> right. is this an audience? I mean, what, what are you? We, we are, we yeah. are filming we in front of a live audience. Live audience. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we played Dark Road versus Kazark. And um, uh, we played Camp Raid. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And he had a, um excellent uh, Kazark force, including a Moon Talon, because we're, we're practicing for the um, uh, Victor on the Wing tournament pack. Right. So he had a flyer. Uh, I did not have one, right? No. I had, I had Dark Grove list that didn't have an allied Bentark set. So um, the highlights for me, Besides, you know, always a good game with Jacob, uh, were twofold. One was the uh, advent of the hanging lash. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, uh, newer figure, newer fit, newer model, right? Um, with the ambush capability, mm. I have a tendency to leave my ambushes on for a very, I leave my ambushes off the table for a very, very long time to keep uh, the opponent guessing. But also, they are very useful. <clears throat> um, to come on the table in a camp raid because it gets them all the way across. Right. Now, you can't be a certain distance away from the objectives. You can't just show up on top of it, but you can, you know, get out there and still, if you're 12 inches or more away, you're still a lot closer than if you were coming all the way across the table. Right. And in fact, they're, they're out there. Just the existence of an ambush on off the table is something the opponent has to account for. Right. You know, um, you can also bring them on your own deployment zone. So if things go badly in camp raid, they can show right up in the first survey. So right, right. Now, they're not going to hold off a Stone Claw Savage, you know, because <laughs> who does that? Not for long. Right? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, but, right, right, not for long. So if it's something where I just need another turn, you know, I just need another turn of right. contesting the objective. Um, and I, I apologize to Jacob because, you know, we were, we were planning on doing this, but we didn't know who was going to be sitting right here. But one of the things I wanted to highlight went very much my way, and that was the use of the encase. Well, ah, right. Because uh, once the Moon Talon come in and done some business, it relocated to a place where I could normally get at it. Um, but the carry I kept eyes on it and threw in case so that it was hard for it to, to move on that spot. Yeah. Um, but there's pictures of the game on Discord. There is. I dropped and a few pretty. pictures. Matt yeah. does a great job of taking photos. Those are Matt's photos. Um, and I think uh, I think both sides are reasonably painted. You know, mine was reasonably painted. Jacob's is excellently painted. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Um, so, uh, but it looked, the t it looked good. The table looked the table fantastic. Looked good. Yeah. You, we created a great table. You did. Uh, and, uh, I think we had, uh, beautiful train, uh, well-painted models and, um, everything you wanted in a free blades game. Super, super important. So, so you, you know, you, you talked about the, the hanging lasher earlier. We had added two models to the dark grove. Uh, faction yes last time around we yes. had the thorn ripper and the hanging lasher and you really think that hanging lasher is i had both of my force right yeah right. i had been playing with two thorn rippers um they weren't doing the kinds of things i needed them to do you know um in a pair of them one of them was doing the things i wanted to do uh two of them was just i needed another thing mm -hmm. you know with that list and that other thing was another hanging lasher. You know, so, um, <laughs> More hanging you know. lasher. Yeah, I needed one model to kind of just get in there. And uh, I had an allied Carvazal, uh to just take the pain. 
No. Um, and I'm also a fan of the uh, iron bark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You used iron bars. That's right. Um, I, I like that model. The 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 seriad is a tricky model to use because you have to lean on that beguile and get a lot out of it because of the points you're paying for. It, right, forty one gold. Yeah, for a seriad, and it can be done, but you're doing a different thing than I was doing with my arms. Right. Then you want to look at dryads and whatever else you know to support that. I was punchy. <laughs> you were very. Punchy. I was punchy with a. Because our player. That's right. Yeah, yeah. not always good. It <laughs> worked out in your favor that time. Well, Camp Raid's a maneuver, yeah. you know. Um, uh, there was some woods on the table. It was a maneuver scenario. And, you know, he wasn't on a rocky ice top beating me down. <laughs> you know, it's just, it, was, it was kind of more my game, right? right. So very enjoyable. Awesome. Awesome. So every session now, every uh, podcast, we're going to talk about a game that we just played, talk about what we got out of it. We're going to talk about... Uh, our MVPs for that game, and just to pass on, we have wait, we have Jacob here. Who's your MVP in that game? He's undecided. He's he's undecided. Yes, yeah, just <laughs> let's let's call that undecided. He's thinking about it. We'll get back to us. <laughs> we'll come out of the channel. Is <laughs> it's not about killing? It's about taking the camp. <laughs> he's thinking about it. Okay, back to you, man. <laughs> Jeepers! <laughs> All right, so tonight we're gonna. We're going to unveil something, something that we've been kind of keeping back. We've we've talked about it a little bit, but we really haven't shown pictures of them, and we haven't. Um... Are we doing on the table first? We, we should, should do on the table. On table. You're right. We're, we should do on the table first. Lore Master Matt, what do you have on your paint table right now? Thank you for asking that great question. Yeah, so this is another little section we're going to do for each of our, uh, our podcasts now. So we're going to talk about one of the battles that we just fought, you know, on the field, and then we're also going to talk about what's on our paint table and what we're working on. So tonight's my night for On the Table. And right now I have um, Erdogar Valor on the table. Oh, I, is that for Inner Sea? It is for Inner Sea. Yeah, I, I a while that. back, I decided that I was going to do an all Eagle Tribe oh, Erdogar Valor um, reband. And so I've done a lot of conversion work and uh, just started getting some paint on those guys. I did the Eagle a while back. I think everybody saw that. Yeah, um, okay. But that was kind of my my test model, you know, to see how this was going to work and how the basing was going to work. But um, done a lot of conversions, and I'm really looking forward to showing those off. But I'm more looking forward to playing them in the NRC campaign. Do you have um, – so what's the core of the – what's the hot thing on the paint table right now for Val? What's the lead model? Right now it's my Valkyrie. Valkyrie, nice. My okay. Awesome. All right. Very cool. And do you have uh, long ships? I have short ships. <laughs> <laughs> I won't I won't play with that one. We're gonna let that one go. Yeah, we're taking the short ship to the island. <laughs> so 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 what I've what I've planned on is having basically a larger canoes. Ah, okay. In my force. I don't want um I don't want one ship to rely on one ship. Right. I'm going to rely on on several smaller ships with assaulting forces with a lot of loads. Uh, yeah. Okay. I get it. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. I was going to say I have I have both in case you need to. Ah, no, I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it. No, I get it. So I, okay, I got some uh, got some a while back, and yeah. I just thought I'd need them, and yeah. now I do. Oh, so I do. Yeah. All right. So back to our big unveil. We um. We've been hiding this. We haven't, you know, normally we have our Patreon members and they get to see everything ahead of time. So they've been seeing pictures of our Black Friday releases for months now, right? right? So they get to start off with the concept art and then they go through the renders. And just this week, I've started showing off the painted models because we have those now and we're starting to get those prepped for release. Um, but there's some pictures that I haven't shown and there's some models that we haven't talked about. And uh, John, we're going to talk about those tonight. We are. I think that it's, it's a really cool thing that we're doing. It's a, it's a whole opening up a whole new uh, side of the game. And so, let's talk about familiars. Let's talk about familiars. What do you want to talk about first? You want to talk about their the look of them? You want to talk about the stats? Yeah, let's talk about their design first. Let's talk about the stats and yeah. things like that. Yeah. What what is a what is a familiar in our game, and and what does it do, and what's you know. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say now the familiars are for the spirit casters. What are yeah. we doing for the energy casters? Well, well, let's just, just, we are going to do something for the energy casters. Let's talk familiars first. Yeah. 
and then go to what the energy caster's equivalent is. So as um, I think a long time fans of the world know, magic was divided into two halves, right? Uh, the spirit half represents basically organic and living things or for recently living things or formerly living things. <laughs> um, and the inorganic, you know, belongs to the energy side. So um, there are uh, worlds out there, fantasy worlds out there, where any magic user can use any kind of magic and any magic user can have a familiar. That's just not who, what, who we are, right. right? It doesn't fit the other world. So they are, the, the familiars are limited to um, a spirit caster. Uh, so you have to be a caster of spirit magic in order to be able to bring one of these to the table. Uh, they are followers. They're generally very small. Rules-wise, they typically have both insignificant. That's not, you know, it's not pejorative. We're not mad at them or anything, you know. Uh, <laughs> he has been since they, we started it. They can't contest objectives. They don't matter for proximity. They can't block, right. you know. So because they're little crit, generally speaking, they're little critters. Creatures, yeah. Uh, and so they also have disguise. Um because we had a lot, you know, we tried some different rules, but disguise works without introducing another rule into the game to sort out whether that thing running around the tabletop is something important or just a part of the landscape. Right. Disguise works. You know, and that way you don't have to have, they're not wearing masks, you know, <laughs> or they're not Arya Stark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason they have disguise rules is just to simplify. You don't have to learn another rule. It plays the same way, knowledge, test, and the like. Smart. But what they do for the caster, they are, Spell projectors, mm. so that you can cast your spell from their location uh, under certain conditions. And they generally have they have their own small attack, but if they get into a fight, once they're discovered, if that's what you're doing with them, they're gonna they're gonna be killed. Um, but they also have a typically have a meta magic talent that the caster can make use of. Nice. Okay. And they're, they're kind of key to what they are as a as an animal or a beast or whatever they are. Um, some of them can fly, okay, you know. Fine. Their gold cost is somewhere in the uh, 12 range, some a little less, some a little more. Um, so like a follower, like a mid-range follower. Yeah. Um, and that's what they do for you rules-wise. And they're different based on, um, you know, the, the nature of them. You kind of expect to have that. So you're going to – any spirit caster can take any one of these – but you're going to kind of fall into, I probably, you know, this kind of spirit caster wants to have the fox. Right. right. Now, before Matt, I know Matt wants to talk about how they look. So we're going to let him do that because he's antsy. Well, you know. Right. But let me set the stage on what we're talking about. Then Matt's going to talk about what they all look like. So there's uh, five new models being introduced. Okay. He's going to talk about what they are. So five brand new models that are going to be sold individually and as a pack of five, getting a nod from the... Uh, lovely and talented Julie Price. Uh, so you can either buy them individually, you get the whole set. And the five animals you know from the Trillion Animal Swarm are also individual familiars. Right. So they're getting stat lines in Living Rule Book 24 3, which will be re released on Black Friday. Um, so if you buy that pack, you have five familiars. Yeah, boom. You're, you're good. Um, and so also, well, I want to let you talk about those because I don't even want to talk about the look of them because they're well, awesome. I, I, I do. When you're done, I'd like to add in what we can do with these two. Yeah, here, that's, right? that's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, so go ahead. All right, so one of the things we wanted to do tonight was have Jen on. Uh, talk uh, yeah. about the design of the, yeah. the models and how they were they were created. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that part alone because I'd really like to for her to talk about that during our Black Friday release episode yeah it makes sense right because she'll be able to we'll talk about how they look tonight you know and you can't be able to see them yet we're going to do okay. that after um and then we'll have her talk about how we got to that yes right. yes that's that's really what i'd like that to do sense. because um one of the things that because we're in a different location tonight um we couldn't get jen in right on that so that's but I want to leave that for her because sure. the the design of these was a a, a road, <laughs> and um, and she did a fantastic job with them. They're beautiful. So uh, as John said, you have the original five from the uh, Animal Swarm. So you know those. There's the the rabbit, the fox, the deer, the skunk, and the squirrel, which are awesome on individual basis. I have to say, yes, they, they, yeah, um, I got a chance to paint those, and they were a lot of fun to paint, and they look good on the individual basis. So. 
but we're also adding the five new ones. And I want to get the two out of the way that you're going to expect, right? Okay, sure, yeah. Yeah, because right. and that is the, the owl and the wolf, which are for... Um, <laughs> for what? <laughs> well, the, the, so, okay, so the, the owl and the wolf models can be taken by any spirit cast. Right. There's going to be a spirit version of each that can only be taken by the Coronas. By the Coronas, right. right? The owl by the Moon's Priestess and the spirit wolf by the uh, right. and you, Moon's Priestess. You've probably seen art of that those has before, spirit. right? So now we're going to make that more of a reality for them, which I think is really, really cool. You know, it's, it's yep. come time to, to do that. But you have a wolf and an owl in that pack. And then we have three brand new models that are unique to Phelan which I love about these, these three designs. And the first one is, we're calling a Voavar, which is a, a bee moth, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Not a behemoth. No, not a behemoth. A bee a moth. A bee right. moth, right? <laughs> and it's, it's situated on a, a beautiful flower. It's a really cool looking model. I love the way that it came out. We're sitting here looking at them right now, yes. like pointing to them. And, so when are they going to be able to, we're going to tease them. They're going to hear this about a week from now. Right. But we're going to be talking about them and they're going to be like, how come I can't? I'm going to dump pictures on, on when we, when the podcast we released. Okay. Yeah. So they've, they've seen them while we're talking. Yeah. You get to see those. Cool. Uh, the second one is uh, what we're calling a Suralax, which means a wind serpent. What? And it looks like a, a small dragon, uh, but in a more Eastern style, right? So quote, unquote, Nola, Chinese, like, yeah, dragon. Chinese dragon. Right. Right. And that is something that uh, in the lore is going to be native to uh, places like Samidia. Right. On, right. And in the mountains, the border mountains there between Grular and uh, Samidia. And it's a really, really cool model. Uh, and Aaron Newell, of course, painted these and he did a fantastic job with them. And then the third one, the third new one is called an Istrazol. And it's from the Southern Continent, and it kind of has a, it's a dinosaur look, and it's a Zarn, has a kind of an armadillo feel to it. Yeah. In our world, it's kind of the trash panda, right? It's, it's, you know, it's- Armored it's, trash panda. It, armored trash panda, right. right? It's, it's, it comes into town, people are familiar with them, they, you know, they're getting into things, they, you have to shoo them out of the house in the morning, you know, that's sort of a, right. of a creature, but all- all five of them are beautiful models, and you're gonna you're gonna want them. Yep. Whether you're running a spirit cast or not, you're gonna you're gonna want these models. And um, we're gonna let Jen talk about how we came up with the designs and all of that. And you know, you'll see the pictures. Aaron Newell did a great job with them. But the they, pictures, as we, as you're listening to the podcast, the pictures will be in the uh, Discord chat. We'll be in the Discord. The sleeping the sleeping Discord. Discord. Discord channel. So. They are, they're gorgeous. I, I just absolutely love them. I'm going to turn it back over to John. Yeah, now we're going to talk a little bit of rules, right? Yeah, let's we'll talk, talk some rules. That. We absolutely want to. So let's say the Voivar, the bee moth, okay, um, flies low speed eight. Okay, so that's one of the features of it that makes it different from the others. Right. Um, and has a, uh, it has a disguise and insignificant and a dodge. That's pretty, it's an animal. Yeah. Right. It has sympathetic spell one. Sympathetic spell. Yeah, we're not going to talk about what that does, huh? You know, that's interesting. Uh, uh, you can. Um, um, it's a meta magic talent that's coming out with twenty four three. Oh, so we like so we wrote some new. Yes. Oh. So, for example, the uh, the Istrizal. I want to double check and make sure it's true. Yeah, the um, trash panda, the armored trash, the armored trash panda, uh, has all these rules: familiar, disguise, and significant. Um, armored deflection instead of dodge, but that makes sense. That's an armored right. looking guy. And he has spell hammer. Oh, so he's yeah. got the meta magic talent, allows you to spend power to get more damage out of your spells. Right. right. So, decision making for which of these you take, because they're all spell projectors and they're all um, insignificant, so they're not contesting objectives. Uh, they cause you a little bit of pain when they die. Sure. Uh, that's a general familiar rule in our world. Um, it's going to be. For a rules-oriented person, they're going to be taking it based on which meta magic talent. Right. right. Just right. like it is. For a more story-based person, they're going to take the one that fits their their story, or both. Right. You know, right. right. Uh, but let's just talk about some of the normal ones. Normal ones. You know, the ones that are already the in normal the animal swarms. The animal swarms. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about what a squirrel does. <laughs> Not a lot from a uh, combat standpoint. Sits around in trees and chatters at you, <laughs> tears things up in your alley. Uh, Right, he's both he's both elusive and dodge. Nice. He's a little bit easier to get away. He's one of the lesser 
costed one. He's only nine gold to, to play. It might be another decision. He's kind of a small guy. He's very small. Okay. And spell stretcher. So he's the guy that allows oh. the um, spell AOEs to be expanded. Right, right, right. right. The walls. Yeah. yeah. So you might take him because it's harder, for, harder to kill him because he has elusive. You might take him because he's less cost. Right. And you might take him because of what he has for um, what he has for um, his um, metamagic talent. Right. Uh, you might take him if you want to make uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle jokes. You know, it's really up to you what you do with that. So, but all of them have a, you know, a talent. So where is our miss? Where we? <laughs> it's a tier two from that. Us. That is yeah, yeah. that is something a little bit larger. overlooked. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then once again, we have because uh, we need to remember we put the art for these guys, the images of these painted guys, which are beautiful, like Matt says, in the Discord channel. Let's drop the. Um, let's remember to drop. But if we take a note, let's remember to drop the uh, Moon's Priest and Moon's Priestess images that have the Spirit Owl, the Spirit Wolf, uh, along with them because. A player gets this pack, they're going to be able to get those those two models and right, decide right. whether they're going to paint them for the Coronans or or buy them individually and paint them for the Coronans. Sure. And those are just you know, as you would expect, they're more expensive because they have the spirit talent, uh, and they can do certain things because of that. That's a regular right you now, right non spirit models. And, and if you want to, you want a little background on those those owls. Read Midnight Meeting. Yep. On the uh, World Anvil. World Anvil. Mm -hmm. And just to throw in background in general would give you some insight into that. So. Well, I think these are really awesome. This is a really cool space to go into. Um, and it's kind of brand new for us. And we, I held it back because I, we wanted to kind of drop it on everybody all at once. Because it's not something that we've really broadcast. And it's not something that we've seen coming. But it's a space that's needed to be filled in the world of Phalon for a while. And it, yeah, and it's a big deal for Black Friday because that is five new models. Mm -hmm. You can take two of them two different ways. Right. You can now take the the five uh, models from the Animal Swarm in a different way than you took them before as a trillion. Right. And there are six more new models being released that same weekend that aren't these. Right. Right. I mean, there's eleven models that are that are not in the game now that are going to be out there on. Black Friday. Right. And, you know, we'll talk about this a little bit next time when exactly. we get the whole crew together and talk right. about the Black Friday releases and just what all went into those. But mm -hmm. if you think about that, I mean, that's five plus eleven. Six, that's 11 new models that we've gone through. And that's that's our biggest release yeah, ever, isn't it? Yeah, I had. Well, I think it is. I don't I'm, I didn't go back and look because I got asked that. I One of our players contacted me and said. I'm kind of planning my finances for the Black Friday release. You know, sure. How many models we release it? And I'm like, uh, just a sec, eleven. Holy crap! You know, because I wasn't really thinking about those terms. Right. The familiars right. are kind of, from a design standpoint, especially, yeah, they're kind of a page to me. You know, working right. with the rules and whatever. Right. But on an individual model basis, it's eleven models, and um, a lot of new, a lot of new capabilities that weren't in the rules before. Right. Uh, and I didn't, right off the top of my head, know whether that was. The, Biggest number of models in one release. I don't know the answer. You know, so we'll have to go back and check that. But having those eleven and these other five being able to be used for something else than what they were used before. But we also haven't yet taken care of the energy cast. Ah, oh, yeah. Right? So these are yeah, just the so spirit casters. Now we're not these things we're going to talk about for the energy casters. We're not just doing because we don't want to hear energy caster whining. <laughs> Okay. Although everyone you know, knows I'm a fan of hear energy casters. Energy caster whining. Yep. Uh, so, uh, and, but energy casters, you know, go about things that we want an entirely different flavor. We don't want like an energy familiar. Right. Right. Because that's not the feel. It's totally not what the background tells us about energy magic. And so they get, um, they get a rule and not a model. Okay. okay? They're going to be able, it's a gear item. They're going to be able Interesting. to interesting power stones. Okay. Okay. And we are releasing with 24-3 three, three different ones of the Shield Stone, the Barrier Stone, the Meta Stone. And we'll say releasing. The rules for these stones are going to be in the rule book. In 24-3. 24-3. But they're not things you buy. You don't, you don't physically they're buy a stone. not a model of a 20 no, millimeter. As I say, you couldn't put, couldn't convert a guy. Oh, he's I mean, one. I mean, I've, I've got some stones yeah, here. Yeah, so he has the 25 mil base <laughs> with a little jewel on it. Or something your caster is holding. Right. right. Or the way you paint the, the head of the staff. Yes. Like yes. Because yeah, that might be what's in the end of the um, Stargazer staff, for example. Um, the crystal that's on the um, Neridix. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That kind of thing, right? Because these are energy casters. 
So we'll just talk about, um, let's pick one of them, the Shield Stone. It has three charges. Okay. Okay, so in a game, you can use it three times. That's cool. Once per charge, you may take a card test seven to ignore a range attack that would otherwise be a hit. Ooh. So somebody's shooting at my caster and I'm a shield stone, mm-hmm. right? And um, I throw my car, which is with D10, and then roll a seven or above. And this is after I know it's a hit. So it misses me, I haven't spent anything. You don't, yeah. Right? I have to do that in advance. I can say once I've been hit, I can take a charge, spend it, Roll a seven or higher to go. That's awesome. That's not bad. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and so there's three of those, and there will be more. We we know that there's less power stone choices than there are familiar choices. Um, the uh, we've got a lot that are being play tested, and these are the best of the play test crop. And these can be easily introduced. Right. They don't have to wait for a model release. Right. So we can bring those right into the game. A whole bunch of them right into the game in twenty five one or whatever we want to do. You know. So you'll see more, many more of those. We're not, we're not, you're going to be limited to three. Right. So not only are we getting all these great new models in the Black Friday release, but with 24-3, we're getting a pretty good expansion on Magic as a whole. Yes. Right, because of these rules. Yeah, because yeah, of these yeah. rules. Uh, two new scenarios. Oh. Right. Wow, yeah. Um, the one with the commander in the field. Uh, God, I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. That's all right. Um, where there's a there's a, a a field littered with dead bodies, and you're trying to find your commander. Right, right, right. right. Uh, Bloodfly feast yeah. because blood flies are feasting, and one of those. We'll <laughs> uh, talk about we'll that. We'll talk later. about that one in yeah. the next episode. So, um, and then what's the other one? The other one is um, which one? <laughs> Druid's Grove. That, that employs the go out Druid. Right, right, right. So uh, two new club scenarios. Awesome. Because we are doing something different now. This is not the podcast to talk about. We're doing something different with the standards. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, to make those cleaner, faster, you know, yeah. easier to teach, um, get better resolutions out of them. Yes. You know, Mad Jag over here could turn anything into a draw. I mean, I <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a huge release, really. Yeah. I mean, a, a big deal. Um, Julie's been working her tail off on, you know, layout and, uh, and the prep of the cards and all the other things. We're and we're, we're a month out now. Just, yeah. just a day under a Yes, that's right. Point. Yeah. And Julie, yeah. Julie just made a face. You grab, your, you grab your heart, you know. We're looking for an AD. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> okay. Lots of, of lots of good stuff coming. Yeah. Absolutely. But that's that's gonna that's the main meat of what we wanted to cover today. Uh, but we do want to break one more thing on you guys, and uh, it's an ask from us. Right. It's something that we want to incorporate into each podcast now, going forward, and we're going to call it the job board. The job board. Okay. And um, what we <laughs> what we'd really like for you all to do is post questions that you'd like to have answered about free blades or you know something adjacent. <laughs> On world the, of fail on uh, world of fail right on the the Discord under the Sleeping Grush Podcast channel, and we'll choose one of those questions each week that we do the podcast, and we'll answer that on the air. So a couple things about the questions, just to help people get there's absolutely ad, yes right. It's probably best if you ask a question that has a detailed answer. If you ask a question where the answer is yes. <laughs> That's kind of boring. Okay. You know, also there, there are folks that have, that are uh, questers or play testers or at the more expensive levels of the um, uh, Patreon subscriptions that because of their place and all that scheme, they have some insider knowledge. Right. And we're not going to be answering questions with an inappropriate level of insider knowledge being released in advance of when we need to do that. Correct. For other reasons. Correct. So we, you know, we're looking for questions that have kind of a, you know, as, and, and why questions? This is the time. Absolutely. Why is it that way? You know, normally we don't really go after those too hard because it's a time-consuming thing. And we want to be working on rules and models and, mm-hmm. you know, illustrations and stories. Um, so it's a, a why question. It's a really good kind of question. Why is this? Why is that? Why are these guys this way? Why, why that faction? Why did you make this choice over this choice? Right. We'll talk about that all day. Yeah. So those would be great questions. Like I said, dump those in the Discord on the Sleeping Grush podcast channel, and we'll choose one every week. We're going to take a look at them like on a Sunday before we record. Right. We generally record on Tuesdays. 
we'll take a look at them, kind of discuss them amongst ourselves, and then we'll choose one and we'll work it into the podcast going forward. So three new segments to the podcast we're going to have on the table where we talk about what we're painting, uh, Field of Battle, where we're talking about a recent game and kind of highlighting some of the, the things that went on, the shenanigans, yep. as it may be, and the job board. So we'll have those as uh, constant features throughout that. And guys, we've got a lot of really good content tiled up. We've got our schedule kind of worked out for the rest of the year. And we're going to be really looking forward to the future of DGS Games in these podcasts. We're going to have a lot of guests for the next couple of months. Right. Um, because each of these things that we're doing has a lead basically within the company. And we're going to have them on so they can talk about their point of view. And you're really going to want to tune in. It's going to we be also fantastic. need guests because we really want, you know, we could talk about the last game I played or Matt played. We could talk about what's on my paint table. Or mm-hmm. we, I know you want to talk about what's on my paint table. There's always stuff that hasn't been released yet. <laughs> That's right. You know? <laughs> I'm glad he was the one who had the answer to that tonight because my answer is, well, I really can't tell you what's on my table yet. Because <laughs> um, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's a free blades model, but it's not one we uh, released yet. Um, We'd like to hear these things also from players, too. Yes. And we ought to probably have me and Jacob play a game and have him be the one to talk about the game. Nah, get a little revenge. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. So he does need some revenge. Pummel me with his Kazark and then and right. then come on and go, yeah, I just played John. And, you know, he's, he's over in the doing. corner looking at him, his wounds and, you know, teary-eyed. You know, so I, I really crazy. wish that I could just put the, 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 the action John just took when he talked about licking his wounds on – Look like Phil. Look like right, yeah, I'm like looking look at his wrist. hand. Yeah, <laughs> I only get wounded on my wrist. Apparently. It was it was a little weird sitting this close to him when he was doing that, but I, like, you know, I, I, I maybe tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> after dark. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, we really appreciate you hanging out with us. Um, we've got a lot of good content that's coming up in this last part of the year. Really going to be. We're excited to bring it to you, and I think you're really going to enjoy it when you listen to it. So in the meantime, if you have any comments, put those on the Sleeping Grush Podcast channel on Discord. And until next time, we'll see you around the table. Sil Sakaba. <laughs>